out of curiosity, what were you doing in August of 2022? Maybe you were doing some camping, getting your kids off to college, or preparing your classroom for back to school? Well, I was pretty busy too. Well, we fostered an eight week old pity mix for about two weeks. Boy, <laughs> was that a good reminder for me on how much work it is to raise a young puppy. Now, sure, I know how much work it is. I've been a dog trainer for over 20 years and I have three of my own, but eight week old puppies are just a different beast. It was extremely time consuming and crazy, but we loved it. Now, if you're about to bring home an eight week old puppy, this video will be helpful. Michelle here with How to Train a Dream Dog. Now you just never know what great content I'm going to deliver next week, so subscribe to the channel and you can be in the know. Alright, let me introduce you to Feta. Now I got her from a local rescue organization and I plan to just borrow her for an afternoon of filming a video, but my daughter convinced me to have her around for just a little bit longer. Now before we talked about the week with Feta, let's talk about Feta herself. Dogs are all unique creatures and even dogs from the same litter can be so different from one another. Now here are some things I learned about Feta and one reason why we're able to accomplish so much in one week. Number one, she was naturally confident. It just seems like her personality is led by curiosity and confidence. So that already makes her a puppy that is easy to train. Number two, Feta didn't have a long transition from the rescue. This means no long car rides or plane rides, just a short trip down the road and she was home with us. Number three, she didn't struggle in the crate. I know some of you bring home your new puppies and start crate training right away, only to learn that it is not going so well. But Feta seemed to adjust to it really easily and slept in there the first night. Now we did have some troubles when it came to the pen though. I'll tell you about that in a bit. Number four, now this might make you jealous, but she slept through the night from the second night on. Now I don't know if it was because we had all the right tools to help or we just had the right balance of a schedule, but once she went to sleep at around 10, 30 or 11, she was out till about 6 a.m. Don't be jealous, it was the luck of the draw. Now another thing about Feta, she was really food motivated from day one. This makes for a willing, eager training partner. And I only used her normal kibble for all of the training. Now I know some of you will bring home a new puppy and it may take a few days or even a week for that food interest to kick in. That's okay, I just had the perfect pup who was ready to get to work. Maybe she sensed that I was ready to get to work too. So I lucked out with a pretty easy puppy. Now the final piece of the puzzle that made it go well was I knew what I was doing. Yes, of course I did. I'm a dog trainer and I've trained thousands of dogs. So I was ready to get started with Feta right away when I saw an opportunity. Now these skills went faster than yours will, just like your tax accountant does your taxes a lot faster than you do. Or well, he or she's definitely done it often. They know exactly what to look for. Now along those same lines, I had anticipatory information in my favor. I knew what was coming down the line in terms of canine development so I could work on it before it even became an issue. So for example, that is a pity mix, so she's going to be a big dog and probably pretty heavy too. Jumping is going to be an issue for anyone who owns her, so I wanted to get ahead of that. Now I knew she would naturally jump to interact with people. So from the minute she came into our home, I taught her sit and I rewarded her constantly for it. The more you can predict some of the issues that you might have or might arise and get ahead of them, the better your results are going to be. All right, speaking of jumping, let's jump into what I did with Feta that week. Now, once we knew that Feta was staying for more than the afternoon, we immediately introduced her to the crate and the pen. Now we didn't give her any freedom to roam around the house just yet. My daughter actually held her in her arms while I was setting up the pen and then we put her right in there. Then we took her out for a potty break in the yard. Now we hadn't introduced her to the leash and collar just yet, but you'll see that introduction come pretty soon. Since it was a bit unexpected that we were actually going to keep her for a while, we really had to make a plan. This is when we all had a quick family meeting to figure out who was going to do what. My daughter was home on school break, so she took the night shift. She lucked out on that one. Now my partner, Nate, he happened to be off work that week. So he took care of Feta during my Zoom calls with my pro level students and my meetings with the How to Train a Dream Dog team. Now, even with all that extra help, I did not get a lot of work done that week other than the stuff that simply had to get done. Now, having a new puppy in the house, especially when you're the main trainer, 
takes a lot of time. Now, once we got the schedule down and did a little bonding, we jumped right into some of the training. Yes, on the first day. Now, I have to say it again, that might not be your reality. We did have a little bit of a unicorn situation of an eager puppy and an experienced handler. Your results may vary, or you may have the same results and be able to get going right away too. Now, the first thing I taught Feta was the interrupter cue. We really hadn't decided on her name at that point. So instead of playing the name game with her, I taught her to look at me when she heard a very specific noise. I used a kissy noise. <laughs> but you can choose any noise as long as it's not scary or startling. Now, when first introducing it, I paired it with treats to let her know that good things happen when she responds to that noise. Yes. Yes, I like that too. Yes! I used this cue for the rest of the two weeks to get her attention. And later that week, we finally settled on a name, Feta, for her. So then we introduced her name using the same technique. Next, we decided to teach one of the basic games from my online course, Bump It. Now I wanted to do this game early on because I saw how mouthy her littermate brother was. I wasn't sure if she was just a few days away from this same mouthiness, but I wanted to be proactive instead of reactive. Now Bump It is a great alternative to a puppy biting your hand, and it's an easy one to learn, so it's a great one to start with. That's actually why I have it in module one of the course. Then, I decided to do a test, so I taught her down. Now, I don't necessarily recommend this for you because this is an even more advanced skill for an eight-week-old puppy, but since she was doing so well with sit, I wanted to see how biddable she was. She did really well, so that encouraged me to keep going with other skills. At any point in the process, if she was not participating enthusiastically and learning what I was teaching, we would stop and take a break or go back to some more basic skills. Now, I can't really remember when we introduced Fetch. Honestly, that whole week was pretty much a blur. Now, if you have a young puppy, you know what I mean. But I think it was about day two or three when we started encouraging her to bring back the toy. She loved this game. Now, we started by just tossing it only a few feet away and then rewarding her when she came back. Yes, she got distracted at times, But with the interrupter cue and some kibble, we got our attention back on us. Now, if at any point we had a hard time keeping our attention, we just ended the session. Each time we played these games or worked on a skill, it lasted only about five minutes. That's actually a pretty long time for a young puppy, but she and I were both having fun. So most puppies would do better with a session lasting one to maybe three minutes and then ending it with some decompression time. So far, most of these games have been all about the fun but we needed to start doing some practical skills. So next we started with the introduction to the collar. Part one of the process was just associating the collar with good things. Part two was when we actually encouraged her to put her head through the collar to get the treat. And part three was her putting her head through the smaller opening and keeping it in there longer. Do you see how I broke that seemingly simple task into baby steps? That's how dog training works. We did these steps over several days, multiple times a day. Now the end result of that process was when we actually put on the collar. She was still a little unsure of it, but I did a treat scatter on the floor to help her focus on something other than the foreign object coming at her. That's something you can do if your pup is starting to bite on the leash when you go to put it on too. Now I mentioned it earlier that she did really well in the crate. And at first she was napping only about an hour before she would wake up and we'd start the wake window activities all over again. But we actually modified her schedule a little bit and added in a few more enrichment activities. Then we noticed that she started to sleep longer. By the end of the first week, we were getting naps of about two or three hours. Practice makes progress. Although the crate was going really well, the pen training definitely needed some work. We only just got started on this at around the same time she was leaving us, but it was slow going. She was very content to snooze while we were away from her, but if she was awake, 
it was game over. We utilized one of the games in the online course for this training, where we step away for short intervals and then reward for her being calm. Now, in addition to confidence building with the pen, I started on some leash training games with her too. I played the one, two, three pattern game that I taught all of you guys in this video. Now, I had to keep this game at a pretty fast pace to keep her attention and I had to be very prepared so I wasn't fumbling with treats. This game is all about timing and you, the human, have to be good at it. Now it helped that I kept practice areas small which cut down on distractions and helped out a focus on me and the game. Now as we got good at these games we started working on multiple skills at once and then we added in some distractions as in another dog. But Feta continued to do very well. Now you might be wondering why Feta isn't shown working with anyone else in the family? Well, I did about 99% of the training with Feta. It's just what I do. The family was content to play more of the role in the potty breaks and playtime, but this is also partly why Feta did so well with me. We got used to working together really quickly. Now, if the other family members wanted to get involved in training, they'd need to start from the basic skills and work up. They would not simply be able to start where I left off because they need to practice their mechanics and Feta needs to get used to working with a new person. Now, I moved really fast through some of these skills. As I said, Feta was receptive to them, but this is also a habit that is left over from when I used to board and train. So I would usually only have about two to three weeks to work with a puppy before the owner returned with some high expectations. So I'm used to working quickly. I strongly recommend though, you go at your puppy's pace and a pace that works for you, the human. Okay, maybe you're thinking that Feta was all work and no play, but I assure you, we had plenty of playtime. Now, before I get into that, let me give you another reminder to subscribe to the channel. And if you're really loving the content, feel free to give us a thanks with that little button below. My team and I work really hard to provide free resources to you each week, and your support will help that continue. All right, back to the fun stuff with Feta. Now, here are some of the things we did in between training sessions and naps. We loved playing with the holy roller ball outside, and she also really enjoyed a licky mat in the pen. She had a snuffle mat too, but she was actually biting the fabric too much and not really understanding how to look for the treats, so we had to take that one away. Now, we could have introduced it a few weeks later, and I think she would have been just fine. We also gave her a busy box with towels. We played with the long rope toy and also the flirt pole. She also got a very short playtime with my other dog, Pickles. This was the only dog she met in my home, even though I have three dogs. I just knew that Wesley was not a good match for her due to his energy and size, and old lady Harper wanted nothing to do with an energetic puppy. It was a pretty intense management of crates and gates to keep them all separate, but the family helped me with that. I introduced Feta to Pickles after, I think it was about four to five days. Now during the short play session, Pickles was self-handicapping by getting down low, but Feta got a little too intense and Pickles is not fond of intense dogs. Now in the whole week, they only played for a few minutes because they were not a good pair. Now check out our recent video on puppy playdates to figure out if your puppy's playmate is a good fit. Now, if we had kept Feta longer, I would have found an appropriate playmate that didn't mind her intense play style. Honestly, puppies are best playing with other puppies. They tend to be very mouthy and very intense and most older dogs aren't so fond of that. Now, even humans are not great playmates for puppies, which is why we recommend tools that allow you to play, but not be part of that mouthiness. Okay, all that sounds like a pretty amazing week for Feta, right? Well, I was giving you the highlight reel. <laughs> we definitely had a few low points too. We are human after all. So despite being very observant, we did have a couple accidents. Boy, she has got to go a lot. And that meant not a lot of other things got done. I just wanted a few hours of uninterrupted work time, but having to take her out every 20 minutes when she was awake really cut into that. There was no way we could have fostered her if my daughter wasn't on summer break or if my partner wasn't on vacation that week. I just would not have had the time to tend to her needs. In addition to all of her needs, I still have three other dogs who needed their usual level of care and attention. Some things just cannot be put aside when you have a new puppy in the house. Now, the other thing I realized was how important it was to keep a log of Feta's activities. Now, you might think you remember when you took out your puppy last but the day just goes on and it becomes a blur of play and naps and potty trips. A few times I actually had to check my outdoor security camera for when we had gone out. So keeping a log was so important when there were different people keeping an eye on her too. 
we had to communicate well. Now, one other thing that was a little challenging was that she had extremely loose stool. I'm not sure the food she was getting was the best for her, but we decided not to change it. We weren't planning to have her that long, so I didn't want to have too many changes happen in a short time. Now, you can learn more about food-related topics in this video. I even include a great resource on how to evaluate the quality of food your dog is getting. All right, so after about 10 days, I had to return Feta to the rescue organization. They were scheduling her spay surgery and all of her other litter mates had been adopted. So I wanted her to become more visible to future owners. Now I'm sure that whoever ended up with Feta soon figured out how smart she was and how good she was at a lot of different skills. Whoever you are, you're welcome. <laughs> So that was my experience with a foster pup named after Cheese. It was a great reminder of all of the work that goes into a new puppy. And it's helping me create a few more games for my online course to help new puppy parents. Just remember that if you take a thousand puppies and give them a week in their new home, you will have a thousand unique experiences. So take a few tips from my experience and apply it to your situation, but then enjoy what the difference is for you. And if you run into something that you need help with, well, you know where to find me. In the comments below, tell me, how old is your puppy and how's that first week going? 